Coming up, I finally filmed the 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner that some of you guys have spotted over the years. At the end of the video, I started up and let it idle and drive around a little bit. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. There's a long story on this car. Many years ago, I stumbled across a barn find of a very similar car, and with it came a bunch of extra stuff too. Hoods and fenders and trunks and all kinds of things. The thing needed a whole restoration. Every panel was dented, and so I just parked it and saved it for that day when I wasn't going to be working on the Fiero anymore. Well, that day never really came. Finally decided to look up what some of that stuff was worth that had come with it to find that I was sitting on quite a stockpile. My line of thinking was, instead of breaking my back restoring this thing and probably spending more than it's worth, why don't I just look for something that's already done that I can trade up for? So what I did is I started looking for other Roadrunners that were already finished. Six months go by and one finally pops up, but he said he was taking no trades or anything and I didn't have enough cash. A couple weeks go by and it was still posted. So I finally hit up the seller, find out that he actually would be interested in the trade. I trailered the old car out there with all the panels and everything with it, picked up the new one and came back. And this thing since has pretty much become a garage queen because I still work a lot on the Fiero. Anyways, this car has pretty much every option that I could ever dream of. And I might be biased, but this is my favorite body style muscle car that they ever made. Now this was only a two year body style. Most of the things on this car are reproduction. The paint on this car is not perfect. There are a few messed up spots, but overall it's not that bad. When I picked it up, I had to fix some of the lighting and rewire the horn. When I actually brought this car home, I took it out the first time and it burned through a spark plug wire. With the dumping the extra fuel in the exhaust, I actually ran into a pretty big backfire that blew out one of my two mufflers. It also came with a flex fan and no radiator fan fan shroud so I found a radiator fan shroud for about 40 bucks at a swap meet and then I bought a clutch fan and put that on too. I also replaced the thermostat. Funny story about the clutch fan is that I bought the most expensive one I could find in Rock Auto. It was a Hayden part and actually did not bolt up to the water pump housing. I actually had to grind off a little bit of the slotted hole in order to fit the clutch fan on. So apparently buying the most expensive part does not always mean that it's a good quality part. So this car is a 383 car. The block is not original which is okay with me because that way it's a lot less expensive than a numbers matching car. It does have a torquer intake with a 600 CFM carburetor on it. I'm actually probably going to swap this intake out with a dual plane performer intake. I haven't decided if I'm going to swap out this intake yet, but if I do, I might be videotaping it. And that will probably be the only video that I make of doing any mechanical maintenance on this car. It does have the Roadrunner voice box is what they call it, or the Roadrunner sounding horn. <laughs> Pretty interesting hood ornament if you ask me too. I really like the hood decals and the stripe. I'm not really a fan of the air grabber hood. It's also got these diffuser type things on the front. The wheels are Keystone Classics, which is pretty popular error correct sort of rim. And the stripe on the side has a mirror-like finish and it's very reflective at certain angles. It has the go wing as opposed to the goal wing which I happen to like the go a little bit better. I do like the 72 bumpers a little bit more, but the 71's really been growing on me. It does have the dual exhaust. It does have air shocks in the back. I never even knew that this interior existed until I saw this car in person. It's called the Halloween interior. Apparently it was an option from the factory. The four speed manual transmission in it does have the rally gauges. Speedometer is actually not wired right. For some reason it shows an extremely high RPM. Maybe it's wired for the six cylinder option. I was told that part of the dashboard is not original. You know, the dimmer switch on this thing doesn't work very well. I'm not sure what it should work like. I might make a video of detailing this car and going over it, washing and waxing this car thoroughly. I've pretty much got every receipt that went into restoring this car. I really like the engine option because it's not crazy powerful, but at the same time, it does have plenty of low end torque. I really don't get this car out and drive it that much. I really don't know that much about these cars, so I bought the service manual recently. Overall, I am very lucky to have this car as it is my dream car. Now I'll start it up and drive it around a little bit.
Be sure to check out my other videos on the Fiero because that's what this channel is mainly about. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you got any questions, I'll answer them in the comments.